The best out of the two worlds, Android TV and portable projectors. Yes, that's right, this is one of the best tiny yet super powerful devices in this class and I can't wait to tell you everything I found out about the Nebula Solar. Let's inspect! Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Michael, so nice to meet you. And if you like the idea of inspecting cool tech, then I invite you to subscribe to the channel because a lot more videos are about to come in the coming weeks. And uh, here's today's gadget that we are going to inspect and test. It's called the Nebula Solar, which is a portable projector running Android TV. And I know it sounds really interesting and exciting. Uh, probably the first thing to mention, well, I guess you can hear it's working there's a fan inside when uh, it, it works as a projector there's a fan because it needs to cool down um, it has nothing to do with solar energy although the name is solar it has no embedded solar charging or whatsoever it has a battery inside but it's charged through a type-c cable i guess the name is inspired by the white switching to bluetooth speaker mode i think the name is inspired by uh, the white color and maybe the powerful lamp on the front and we'll cover all these tech specs actually we're going to talk about everything which is important to know before you go ahead and buy a portable projector probably whether you decide to get this one or not and i'll link it in the description down below so let's go ahead and inspect all that the price the hardware the software all the features and the actual performance of the nebula solar and figure out whether it's a worthy product now nebula's brand was launched in 2017 as anchors innovation brand a few months ago, I've explored for you the Nebula capsule, which I still use until now, and it's a marvelous option for switching the scenery and enjoying some different kind of experience. Now, this year, Nebula are focusing on their model Solar. It's a bit more expensive than some of the predecessors, but it's the most budget-friendly, good portable projector from their product line, and also a lot better in many ways than the competition. Nebula projectors are so good that most of the time you wouldn't compare it to other brands, it's gonna be more like comparing and choosing between devices from their own portfolio. So let me tell you about my experience. It starts with the unboxing, which gave me this sweet feeling brought by a premium packaging with a really good design. I was a bit surprised by the size, to be honest, because the box of the capsule was a lot smaller. Anyhow, most of the specs are shown here, and we notice that there's three-hour playback advertised, alongside another good bunch of cool specs. Inside the box, there's the projector, the remote, a charging cable, and a charger. Yes, a 65-watt wall charger, which kind of surprised me, because even smartphone makers these days are slowly stopping being that generous. And yes, this charger is great for being used as a smartphone charger as well. Kinda makes sense because Anchor, the master brand, is known for its excellent wall chargers. Now, the learning curve about how to use it is quite simple and prior to diving into it, let us take a closer look at the device's specs. On the front we can see the optics as well as a sensor helping to determine the most optimal display settings. Projected size can be up to 120 inches. It's full HD, 400 ANSI lumens, has autofocus system, automatic keystone correction, HDMI and USB ports on the back, quad-core CPU and 2GB RAM inside, dual-band Wi-Fi, included remote, supports HDR10 and comes with Android TV 9, maybe soon updated to 10. From everything mentioned, there are quite many great news. Obviously, we cannot expect super bright image out of a portable projector. The solar is considerably brighter than the capsule, as you can see, but not as bright as the Mars 2 Pro or the Cosmos series, of course. For rather darker rooms, I think it's perfect. You will see most details in very bright conditions as well. However, some of the colors will look a bit paler and with lower contrast. If you need to squeeze the maximum out of it, I'd strongly recommend using a projecting screen and keeping it connected to the charger because that gives you about 100 extra lumens. Given the portable nature of the Nebula Solar, obviously you can't always find all of that, but at least now you know how image quality can be improved. So let's take a look at some more examples. Gonna run for you a few videos and let's try to play the original right next to the projected image. Apparently, in dark conditions, difference is just minor. There's a slight difference with the colors, very normal condition because each device has its own color science. 
A good feature, Nebula have integrated menu, where you can select the wall or surfaces color so that it reproduces the image in a better way. In fact, there's one more feature which I consider to be a game changer. If you happen to move the projector, it automatically goes for auto-focusing and it's so back to its fully optimal performance, or you can run that with the help of the remote. Just a single press of a button eliminates one of the most annoying parts when using a wall projector, the focusing. Now, some words about the software experience. Android's TV is well known for its good performance and nice features. It is the TV edition of the popular Android distribution, so it will look different compared to your smartphone. Nicely grouped menus, intuitive interface and lots of settings to fine-tune through the remote. Brilliant remote, by the way. Very ergonomic and buttons are placed in a thoughtful way. I've had zero complications and the response was really good. You can use now Play Store to get your favorite apps and take advantage of the voice control. That's an upgrade, as some of the older Nebula devices had Aptoid Market instead. The only slight disadvantage I noticed was the lack of Netflix integration out of the box. It works, you just have to install it through the Nebula Manager app. The strong sides of Android TV are quite a few. The major one for me is the integrated cast function, because there's Chromecast built in, and you can stream almost anything directly from your phone, just as it is with most similar devices. So, it truly provides equivalent experience to most Android TV-based smart TVs. I've of course tried playing some games, most of them worked fine. Even some of the games with high-intensive graphics were great for playback, so in my opinion, we have here excellent way to not only watch movies and content on demand, but also to play games and have this projector as a multimedia center at home. Oh, there's a speaker mode too. Just tick this Bluetooth speaker mode on and play your favorite music. Dolby Audio certified, so quality is fine. To my list with remarks, I could add a few major points. The first one, I, I hoped for slightly greater brightness. Now, not that it's not bright enough, but compared to standalone power sourced projectors, it's not that good, so probably 100 to 200 more ANSI lumens would have been a great thing. But even like that, if the room is dark enough, I think the image quality is quite good. On the rear side, there apparently is no VGA port, which I kind of misses well. I know VGA is already outdated analog input. But there still are a lot of computers out there which are not uh, ready for this digital upgrade to go for HDMI. So I guess having that would have been nice, although if the idea is to primarily use your smartphone and use Chromecast for sharing content and streaming content, uh, that pretty much explains this concept. And also the remote has no backlights, which especially if you operate in dark, which you kind of are supposed to when using a projector, uh, it's not very convenient, and especially when you put it side by side with the Minix remote or the Nvidia Shoot TV remote, which both have backlights, you can see the difference is pretty significant. So at the end, this is a perfect device for everybody that often presents and needs independent, easy to use setup and gear. It will certainly increase a lot your credibility and it's a fantastic way to impress your audience with the way technology can help presentation these days. It also is a great plan B for home cinema setup if great out-of-the-box audio is not a priority, but you can always connect an external sound device. It also is a fantastic choice for fairs and exhibitions where bringing a large 50-inch TV or screen is either too expensive or too complicated. And yes, it comes at a pretty steep price, given the fact that large smart TVs these days can be a lot more affordable, but portability comes with some caveats and luckily, with the Nebula Solar, they're brought to minimum. This brings us to the end of this episode. I hope it was useful and perhaps you know now better what to look for when choosing your next portable projector. If you find this review helpful, don't forget that there are some very easy and free of charge ways to support us. You can like the video, subscribe to the channel for more cool tech inspections and also invite your friends to take a look at this video as well. I hope that you're going to enjoy the rest of your day, take good care and see you in the next episode. Bye!